Everyone, and um, I'd just like to, I can hold it up, I can even shout with a loud voice. I'd just like to welcome you all here today for what is the third in our series of 30th anniversary seminars for ERG after 30 years. Um, we're all getting a bit more forgetful, a bit greyer. Um, and so it's maybe appropriate that for the third section, our third seminar, we've decided to focus on the emerging evidence of how air pollution may be impacting on, on brain health. So I'm, I'm not going to say very much about this, really, because we have three fantastic speakers who've been selected because they cover a breadth of skills relevant to these particular topic areas. But those of us who work in air pollution always begin by usually trotting out very large numbers, statistics, horror stories, big sort of chunky health impacts. And it's very well established. There are cardiovascular risks, there are cerebrovascular risks, there are pulmonary risk factors. But it's really been over the last decade that we've begun to see new evidence emerging of impacts on the brain, dementia, depression, cognition, across the entire life course. And all of this is incredibly important, of course, because what it really means is that we probably, I would argue, have potentially underestimated, not overestimated, the impact of air pollution on the health of the nation by not considering its impact on brain health, and particularly on dementia. And I think I, I have actually stolen this slide from one of my PhD students, Max, who's sitting in the back here. But I think it's important to just reflect on how important dementia is in terms of an aging population. We're talking about 2 million projected cases by 2050. In England, certainly within England last year, dementia was the leading cause of death. Not in Scotland, but certainly in England. It's relentless. It has huge impacts which are felt over numerous years, resulting almost in a complete loss of independence and impacts not only on the individual but on the families and on society in general. And I suppose this is also very important in an ageing population. In the old, it is the most feared disease. So we have a disease which is growing, a disease which causes people to be concerned. We know that it's costing our health system a huge amount of money, and it will continue to do so. And so if air pollution, if air pollution only explained a tiny fraction of this additional risk of dementia in the UK population, it would potentially be a mechanism for actually, if you could reduce the air pollution, having a significant benefit to the population in terms of reducing these risk factors. Now, perhaps this came to the head when COMI, which is the government's committee on medical effects of air pollution, decided to review the evidence base. The evidence had been mounting over the last decade. And this report was published last year. We have members of the Secretariat here. And I, rather than go through this, because this will be covered in great detail, this really looked and attempted to synthesize the evidence, not just of association from epidemiology, but it sought to look also at the evidence of causation and mechanisms that could explain why air pollution might be associated with cognitive decline. And the conclusion of this report was that there was something in it, yes? I think that's the safest way of summarizing it. There was something in this. This wasn't just an association which was due to pure confounding. There were potential mechanisms which we needed to look into, and we needed to really focus new studies on addressing these associations on cognitive decline, and potentially to spend more time looking at the way in which sort of like these symptoms manifested over the life course. So it's a great time to review where we are in this topic, and it's a great time for me to highlight this, and in the audience I have a number of colleagues, because one of the recommendations of the COMIC report was that we needed more toxicology and more integrated science in this area. And 18 months ago, we were funded to do just that, which allowed me to link together toxicologists with experts in brain science, with statisticians and geneticists to try to 
begin to move forward in a project known as HIPTOX to begin to actually do some studies. Human exposure studies looking at cognition, animal studies to look at the way in which air pollution and different types of air pollution, diesel, wood smoke, cooking aerosol, semi-organic aerosol might impact on the brain. And so hopefully as we go through this talk, we're going to introduce you to some members of those consortiums who can tell you about the sort of work which is going on in future to try to understand this in greater detail. Our programme today, we have three fantastic speakers covering the epidemiological evidence, which is where it all begins. The identification of associations are critical to actually driving the science forward in this area. We have ERG's own Clear Cassiani, who is currently leading our air pollution epidemiology group, but is one of Europe's leading epidemiologists. We will then move on to Professor Paul Matthews, who is the head of the Department of Brain Sciences here in Dementia, uh, in Imperial College, sorry, slip of the tongue. Um, and we'll just try to put this into framework, the framework of how we understand how air pollution could impact on dementias and also Alzheimer's disease. Before moving on to Professor Roland Wolf from the University of Dundee, who's going to give us information on how actually we can begin to use toxicology and toxicological models to get a handle on how air pollution, low-level air pollution experienced over many decades could bring about the sort of changes that would accelerate cognitive decline within the population and lead people towards a clinical diagnosis of dementia. These are our speakers for today. And I'm going to say no more. That's the benefit of being the chair. And pass you across to Professor Cassiano. <laughs>